Hi there. If it's your first time here on my channel, <laughs> this is an orchid channel 99.9% .9 of the time, but today I'm addressing my Gloriosa lily tubers, some of them at least. So welcome to Ninja Orchids dealing with Gloriosa tubers. And if you're here because you've been following me for quite some time now because of the orchids and you're still watching this video, which is not orchid related, I thank you as well for being here. Really appreciate it. So I'm in southern Spain and normally my Gloriosa lily tubers should be able to overwinter in their container. And the previous winter of 2020, I did just that. I left them in this container and I have them growing up a gated kind of terrace door there. But the winter was kind of wet and I was getting nervous that I had misjudged what they should be capable of. So come spring, I was nervous that I had lost my tubers, but they did come up and they came up well. Now here in 2021, I'm already having winter temperatures that are not normal for Southern Spain. I am hovering around the nine to eight degrees Celsius, but yeah, I'm nervous. I don't want to be apprehensive again come spring 2022. So I'm going to dig out the tubers that I can dig out and I'm going to try and not cast too much of a shadow on what I'm doing. Then I'm going to talk you through the process of what I'm doing and how I'm going to store them throughout the winter, hopefully to be able to put them back into this container come spring. Now, this is the point in time where I dig out my tubers. You see how easily that came off? That's a little vine and it just deteriorated. And by this time, whatever tuber is in here, has had all the energy that it could absorb from the light going back into the tuber. And that is when it comes off easily. And now you will also see that I still have some green vines left. Sorry about the shadow. And that's why I'm saying I'm not going to dig them all out because I want them to get as much energy as possible. But I can do the other half of this container. A little bit awkward with my shadow, but I'm hoping to get everything in shot. It's a little bit like Christmas. You don't know what you're going to find. I bought six tubers back in the day in 2019. Now, let's see how many we can at least get from this side of the container. What we can salvage if there's anything there at all. I love doing this kind of work because it's like Christmas. You don't know what you're going to get. Unwrapping something. And it could be I've already missed the mark and everything in here on this side has rotted. The other side I know is still okay because I can see some of them on the top. They sort of came out of the soil. The soil mix I used in here, this is not looking good. The soil mix I used in here was half and half the normal potting soil mix. And then I really added a lot of sand because they like their drainage. This is really not looking good. Oh, there's one right down here. Let me see. I may change the camera angle so you can see what I'm doing. Wow, that's deep. Let's see if I can get this one out. And if you can see anything very, very gently because they are fresh, they are tender. Don't want to snap them. It's almost like doing a sweet potato harvest. Very, very tender at the beginning. Here's one. That looks nice. We can work with that. All right. I like that. Where's another one? Let's have a look-see. I had no idea that they had buried themselves so deeply. Very, very gentle. Making a big mess. That's why I like to work with orchids in inorganic media. But okay. Well, this one is a bit longer. I really hope that some of this is in shot. Try to wait for, oh, this is a good and a nice one. Yeah, I like the size of this one. It's all the way down into the pot. And what I'm doing is with my finger, as I'm tracing around the edge of the tuber, so that I don't just pull and snap it. Now you can propagate Gloriosa lily tubers without having to worry about snapping them. They're pretty forgiving. But at this point, I first want to see what it is that I actually have to work with 
and I have no intention of dividing my tubers. So I would like to get them out in one piece as best as possible. There we go. Whoa, it's still going. Nope, there's the next one. Wow, they have really gone down into the pot. A lot of shadows. I am so, so sorry, but it's loose. At least it's loose, that's good. Let me go back here. There we go. Oh, I like this one. And you see, he oh, okay, no, this is the outer skin, fine. I like this one. Yeah, this is good. Woohoo! I think I'm doing the right thing. I got my drying rack. And then there's outer skin. You see, you want to be careful not to bruise the tubers, encouraging any rot to go in through any of the abrasions. And even though, again, I'm in a very, very mild climate here in southern Spain, it rained five days ago, and this soil is still sopping wet. The container is located on the west side, which you would think, because of the nice warm sun coming down, that it would dry out. But five days, just found another one. Five days, soil wet, I don't like it and the temperatures being cooler than they've ever been before, I'm gonna take them out and store them. So let's see if we can do this without creating too much of a mess and without breaking the next one. Oh, this is a nice big one. Lots of shadows. My apologies once again. Uh, that was not the tuber, that is the clay piece that I put for where the hole is. Here's another one. Woohoo! Oh, yay! Look! Look! Ah! Love it! Nice! Oh, I feel so much better doing this. I was sort of like, am I going to? Am I not going to? Look! <laughs> They're coming out. Good stuff. Yeah, I was sort of in two minds again. Should I? Shouldn't I? And then I remembered my apprehension last spring and I thought no I'm gonna I'm gonna do this now if I can oh there's another one Ooh, here we go you see there we go you see this this is rot starting now if this tuber is saved that would be great but there's a cut that's interesting. Let's see what else we can find and why this is looking the way it is. This may be one that we've lost simply because of the conditions. Here's another little itty bitty one. Curly whirly. No rhyme or reason to the shape of the tubers. And for anybody that's been with my channel for a while now, maybe you're wondering where are the dogs? <laughs> well, I've closed the terrace door. <laughs> because otherwise I would not be able to do this and it would get even messier. Here's another one. Now you see, I'm trying to stay away from the ones that still have the vine on it. I want to take advantage of as much energy that they can consume prior to me lifting them up. But this one has no vine on it, so maybe we can address that one. Or shoe anyone? <laughs> That is not too shabby. That I'm, I'm very, very pleased with that. The drying out process is pretty straightforward. Now, I could easily just take some water to them and hose them down, get rid of all that excess media, but I don't want to get them wet. I'm trying to get them to dry out. So in my case, what I'm going to do is let the sun do it for me. I have them here now for the next two or three hours, whatever it takes to get them to dry out. And if it takes even longer, it doesn't matter. The point is, the drying out is not to desiccate the tubers. The drying out is so that the soil will come off much, much easier without me rubbing around on the tubers themselves and damaging the fragile, fragile texture that is around it. See, that's the rotten one. So we'll be watching this one to see what is going on and why it broke like that. This one was not snapped in the pot. I didn't hear a crack or a snap. So something already started rotting. 
and that makes me very, very comfortable with my judgment of getting them out this season. Right, let's get them to dry out. Depending how long it takes, either way, I'll be back when we can sort of easily brush off all that extra media and then we'll put them into storage and talk about how to overwinter them until, woohoo, spring comes around. It's the next day, the chores got ahead of me. I could not address my tubers on the same day, so they've had 24 hours to sit on this table and dry out. I have a little soft brush here. I don't want to be using too much of my hands to be wiping away, dusting off the dried off media that is left behind. You can see how fragile they are. Very, very tender and their skin kind of comes off super easily. But this is all part and parcel of tubers that have just been freshly dug up. Nice and fleshy, funky looking, interesting shape. And then there will be signs of the growing points come spring and usually they will grow out on both ends, form new roots and new shoots. Eventually this will also die back, but another tuber will progress and grow, hopefully, <laughs> when we plant this one up and it comes alive again. It's so easy after getting them dried just to brush off that excess media. Now, because I used a lot of sand in my previous mix, this is not really necessary. It's just I like to do it. Gives me a better impression of what my tubers look like when I dug them up. And to be able to monitor their progress while I store them. Because if anything were to go wrong or happen to them, I can see the before and the during so that I can intervene and make sure they come out nice and strong, ready to go in the new season. And you can see the growing points, hopefully, at the end. Yeah, so yeah, I do take off all the media as best as possible, as gently as possible. These tubers are super brittle, and I will show you the one that was you know, where I think rot kicked in. And I can't exactly say why the rot kicked in. At both ends, on top of that, isn't that remarkable how they come out? But yeah, just got to be careful. I think they're amazing. Just got to be careful not to bruise that outer structure because of this. We'll deal with that. I don't have any hopes of this one bouncing back, but nature knows better than I do, and we're gonna give it a go. Not binning it at all. Ooh, careful. See, even just the brush pushing against it, I can feel the flex in that tuber because it's long and skinny. So just be careful to support that as I brush. There we go, that's good enough. <laughs> amazing the shapes, absolutely amazing. So this one has three growing points. That's neat. If all goes well throughout the storage in the winter, this one will give me three new shoots. Awesome, right. So let's address Mr. Rotten here. I've never done this before. I'm just going by what makes sense cutting off the dead bit. I don't want that to perpetuate in the bowl to where I see clean tissue. The growing points on this one clearly have rotted off, but we'll see what it does. So I'm going to just seal the cuts here with some good cinnamon. Nice and generous on it. That'll stop any pathogens, bacteria. It'll dry it out super quickly. I'm gonna leave this one to dry another 24 hours and probably store it in a completely separate container because if there is something that is still lurking and lingering in there, I don't want it to affect my other tubers. 
I'm hoping the choice of my container is big enough for the ones that I have here. If not, I will find another container. Doesn't matter, but for the purposes of demonstration, I'm going to add, this is plain sand and it is super, super dry. So I'm going to add a little bit of sand on the bottom layer. Yeah, you can use vermiculite or you can also just put them in a brown paper bag as they are because what they do need is a little bit of aeration throughout their storage time. I'm not going to use a paper bag because in my super dry climate, I'm going to have to mist the sand ever so often just to give them a little bit of a reprieve and that they don't desiccate entirely. But if you have enough humidity in your climate, a brown paper bag sealed, rolled up in a corner is perfect. So in my case, I'm just going to be misting a little bit, not much. This is not about getting them to grow while they are in storage. This is only so that they don't desiccate too much while they wait for spring. I'm going to place them in such a way that they are happy together. There we go. See that I can get them all in. This looks promising. This looks like it's going to be a good fit. Look at that. Huh, it's like they grew perfectly to fit into one container. And then I'm just going to layer another bit of sand on top, knowing that I have another tuber still waiting for me while it is absorbing all the goodness of the sun through its leaves. It hasn't quite dried out yet. And you see that my container itself does not have any kind of air pockets, air holes. I could actually put a lid on this container and that would be it. I'm not going to. In my case, I do not want my tubers to be in a closed container without air. That's why the brown paper bag would be ideal, but I don't have that. I will get myself some more sand because these need to be covered up properly, everyone in their own right. So this batch of sand just came out of a bag and it has a certain dampness to it already. I am not going to be spraying this batch while I fill it up because that would make it too wet. The idea is just to maintain a tad bit of humidity so that they come out nice and plump, a little bit desiccated in the spring. That's normal, that's fine, but not super dry. And once again, this would be a sealed container if I put a lid on it. That is not a good idea. Don't want any rot to kick in. You still need airflow. That is why I use sand. I'm going to put a little bit of cellophane on the top, but poke aeration holes into that cellophane just because I don't want dust to get in there or maybe something coming in and burying away at them. Literally, they are going to go for a little bit of a snooze. And then in spring, when my outdoor temperatures are 12 degrees Celsius at night, that west corner is always a little bit toastier. And by that time, if it were to rain, it'll be okay. I'm anticipating March, end of March, for it to be the case where I can plant them back into their container and hopefully see more blooms. In the meantime, from here on in, I'm going to just be making sure that my sand doesn't dry out completely. And every once in a while, I will go in with my sprayer and just give it a bit of a mist on the top. That is plenty good enough until we see them again in spring. I feel so much better having lifted them. I don't have to worry now unless I make a mistake during storage. Then, you know, we'll deal with it when the time comes. But this makes me feel a lot better than I was looking for signs of growth at the beginning of this year. <laughs> I was very, very concerned I had lost my tubers. But anyway, everybody that is into the orchids here, thank you so much for watching. If you watched this video, I very much appreciate it. And anybody that is new here because of Gloriosa Lilies specifically, welcome. Appreciate your time. Hope this was helpful. If you have any other observations, comments, experiences that go beyond what I just described and discussed and showed today, feel free to leave that in the comments below for everybody that watches this video and we can learn and share together. Have yourselves a beautiful day, please, on one condition that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.